So what do Oxford University professors say about the use of AI? Oxford University is one of the oldest institutions within the UK educational space and it's really interesting to see kind of their stance, what they think and how they are jumping onto the, the use of AI in education and in schools and in learning for students. I recently spoke to a professor who is a current professor at Oxford University and also works with the UAE government here in Dubai and he was saying that to implement any new course within Oxford University you need a minimum of two years. So let's say, for example, thinking about AI, when it first came out, Oxford University were quiet about it. They didn't say anything about it, didn't introduce any new courses or any new information, just told students not to use it. And then it takes two years for anything to come into place. And he was saying that the reason for that is because it's such an old university, they need to make sure that the courses that they introduce are not trend-led and that they stand the test of time. So a student that graduates from Oxford is graduating from a course that is of value, not just today, a trend that's today, but actually a topic that would be valuable for them 10, 15, 20 years years from now. So I do understand that, but now that AI is here to stay, they have released some information about AI use and actually giving students a lot of support and teaching them how to use it. So I thought I'd go through that with you in today's video. If you want to see more content like this, then don't forget to press the subscribe button to see more like this. And do let me know what your university says. Which country are you based in? How quick were your university to jump on and kind of think about AI use when it came to you studying assignments, etc.? and yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts and see what different countries and different universities do in terms of regulation so this is the website I'll leave it linked down below in the description but essentially it's an academic guidance kind of skills study page which I think is useful it's good to be there in writing so they have a few different sections so you have an overview you then have ethical use what to think about how to use it how to do academic reading writing and presentation skills supporting your learning selecting the right tool and further the resources. I think they've covered a decent amount here. So let's go to ethical use. So here they're just kind of a bit of a warning. They're kind of just saying, look, it's it's there to guide you. It's there to support your, your learning. And if you do use it, you need to still take the notes as you normally do. You still need to make sure you're safeguarding against plagiarism. So of course, even if you do, take any text or material from AI tools, you need to make sure that you've differentiated it clearly from your own work. So that would look like writing citations, maybe saying something like this comes from this source. You don't have to say it comes from AI, but you can say it comes from the source, the citation that the paper actually came from. And, and actually the warning is quite strong here, saying that if you don't authorize the use of AI, and you don't make it clear that you've found these sources from where you found them from, then of course you'll be penalized just like you would in, in any sense when it comes to plagiarism. And, you know, there's a bit of guidance and they're just saying, look, this is the policy and it's, yeah, I think that's quite, quite clear, quite stern. So what things should you think about? So when you're using AI, there are some questions that should be in your mind that allow you to use it with caution, but also to still think critically. So number one is how can they be useful in supporting your learning? You don't always have to use AI. A lot of the time I find people use it because they kind of feel like it will make their life easier, but they're still sat there for two, three hours trying to ask one or two questions. So is it actually supporting your learning? You need to be honest with yourself. Developing your academic skills. The third question is about prompting, and we'll talk a little bit about this later as well. So knowing that if I ask a question to AI and she asks a question to AI, based on the prompt that we use, we'll get different outputs. If I ask ChatGPT and she asks Claude, we'll get different outputs. So understanding that. So that's something to think about as well. Managing the risk of false information and fabrication, which is typically what ChatGPT does. And then maintaining good academic practice. So just because you're using AI doesn't mean that you skip on citing properly and using in-text citations and you know, adding critique and discussion points. You still need to be clear with that kind of thing. So next is looking at what to keep in mind when using tools. And I completely agree with all of this. So let's have a little read. So number one is always cross-checking AI generated outputs against established sources. So this means, you know, if I've asked ChatGPT something and it gives me a source, don't just take that source and write that in your research paper. Look at the source and go and check that source exists and go and open that source, read that source and make sure it says what ChatGPT claims that it says. <laughs> it's as easy as that. And I think people just don't do that enough, which is why you end up in situations where you're citing and it's false and it's, you know, inaccurate. It gets messy. So don't just trust AI blindly. 
Number two is give contextual information when prompting. So again, this is giving you a lot of information about prompts. It's mentioned prompting twice now. It's saying that when you're giving information and you're asking ChatGPT or you know AI to do something, don't just tell them to do it. Say, I'm a third year PhD student. I'm a third year biomedical research student. I'm you know kind of giving them background information so they understand what context the response and the output should be. Oh, there you go. Number three, as if I didn't read this already. So I am an undergraduate student. I'm revising for this. So use persona. So you want to give them an idea of who you might be. Give examples of the kind of responses that you want. I do this a lot, actually, in my personal, well, in my business life. So for example, I really like a script style for my videos. I'll copy that script and I'll say, can you copy this exact style of script and create me another script about X topic? Because I'm, I don't need it to guess. I already have a good example. So just copy this example. Number five, AI tools are not good at calculations. So I kind of disagree with that because they are good at calculations. I'm saying use other tools like calculators. Uh, Oxford, this is kind of outdated. It's actually good at calculations. <laughs> so something to keep in mind that you can do really good stats with AI tools, especially like using Claude. Claude is a really good one for statistical analysis and Julius as well. And then number six, yeah, I, I guess that's true. Don't share sensitive data. Don't share others' IP, people's IP or content created by any other tool. And I think just to add to this, don't share any data. So any unpublished data. If you're a student or a researcher who hasn't published your PhD yet, don't upload your, your whole data set into AI, especially if it's AI that's going to use that data to train itself. Maybe something like Julius AI, they don't use your data or anything that you've input to train itself, so that's okay. But if it's something like ChatGPT, it could take that information and regurgitate it to somebody else. Next is academic reading. So this is where it's so showing you how to use AI to read academic text. Saying that some in some cases, it might undermine development of your academic reading skills. For example, asking an AI tool to summarize an article rather than undertaking the task yourself. I kind of disagree with that, actually. I do disagree with that because I think, you know, we're getting to a stage where in, in society, in life, in generations, where we're not going to need to read a paper from front to back anymore. Like, how many people pick up a newspaper and read it? How many people read anything from front to end? Even books these days, like, we listen to audio books. People just don't read things anymore. And, and I don't, you know, I don't think that's a great thing, but I also don't think that it's a bad thing. If you have tools like AI that can summarize 10 research papers for you in two minutes, why would you not do that to save time? But that doesn't take away the need to read it yourself. So what I I would recommend doing and I've said this in my videos many times before take a research paper upload it to Anara AI ask it to summarize it for you get the key points cool you've done that in a few minutes then you want to take those key points mentioned and find them in the research paper and understand the context know where it's come from and if you think oh you know what this is a really good paper I think this could really help me with my literature review then go ahead and read it you should read it but I think here it's saying that it can undermine development. I don't think it will undermine development because this might not be a skill that you actually ever need to do again because of the development of tech. So this, this to me, this does shout traditional Oxford University, UK University, a bit hesitant to allow AI to take over, but I don't know how old this document is. This this website could be a couple years old, like last year or something, I'm not sure. And it's given some ideas for academic reading, so how you can use AI to engage with your text. So ask it for key terms, ask questions, which is, yeah, it's good. Translate it to different languages, compare your summary. Yeah, that's that's also makes sense. Critically review everything. And it gave some suggestions of prompts that you can try, which again, I do agree with. I think this is, these are all, all really good. Okay, but by the way, if you want a prompting course, the Google one, it's called Google Prompting Course 101 or something. But if you just search Google Prompting Course, you'll find it, it's on YouTube, it's free to, to watch. It's really good, I highly recommend it. The next one is academic writing and presentation skills. Again, we have five ideas for using for academic writing, different outputs for different styles, you can get feedback, you can start by getting some inspiration, some uh, overcoming writer's block, uh, graphs and visuals and everything. So yeah, I like this. I think this is quite straightforward. I'm a bit surprised that they've accepted this, the, this use case as allowed in AI because I would have thought they said don't generate anything from AI, but they've kind of said, you know what, you can start to get this 
these suggestions from the beginning. So yeah, I appreciate that. Then you have how to support your learning. So there's ways that you can use AI to support your studies, verifying uh, any AI outputs against other established sources. So yeah, preparing for lectures, engaging with new complex topics, organizing your notes, definitely. That's a really good one. Timelines, yeah. Mind maps, definitely a good one. Enhancing your language study, for sure. Coding, that's also a really big one. And then here there's some suggestions of prompts that you can use. Then selecting the right tool. So I like this because there's lots of different tools that you can use. And this page tells me that this is outdated content because the, who uses Microsoft Bing chats? Is that even, is that, does that even exist still? Bard, that doesn't exist anyway. Now they've changed it and to Gemini, Claude, yeah. So this is old, <laughs> this needs to be updated. So just bear that in mind. Some of the tools are freely available and some have extra costs. So you, you know, you'll find it useful to use different tools. You get different responses. It says, be careful managing the time that you take exploring. Yeah, I agree with this. AI tools may draw on data that's really out of date. I disagree with that. It's quite, if you use something like Claude, a perplexity, you're finding the most recent data, the most recent research papers. So I think that's fine. And yeah, AI tools do not replace the need for you to develop your own knowledge. Yeah, I mean, it never replaces the, the need for that. I mean, you know, this was interesting, very, very basic. If this is the, the guidance that students get, I'm a little bit concerned because it's very, very basic. Very, even the prompts, when you look down here at the prompts, these prompts, they're very, very basic, very, very simple. I'm guessing Oxford University have a course or have a program or have something that they're providing to their students because this is very, 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 very skin. There's not much skin on these bones, but it's a good start. And you know what? I really don't expect much more from UK universities. I think being here in, in the UAE, I've really seen what it looks like when a country and a governmental department like the government of education here, I've really seen what it looks like when they go full steam ahead and power through when it comes to using AI in universities and schools. Um, in the in the UAE from next academic year, which is August, September uh, this year, they will be introducing AI as a subject in every single school as a mandatory subject. So maths, English, science, AI. And I think that's so fantastic. And I think if you look at these kind of documents within UK universities and you compare it to UAE universities and schools, it looks very different and the conversation is very different. And I think that will be more evident in the generations to come coming out of school but you know it's a great start can't complain oxford university if you watch this you can hire me <laughs> to consult for you because i've done this a lot before and i can see a lot of gaps in guidance but if you would like to comment on this i would love to hear your thoughts do you think that universities should just stay away and just say don't use AI to their students? Or do you think they should actually be saying, you know what, it's the devil that we, we, we can't get rid of? Or should they say, you know what, it's something that we have now and we need to accept and realize that our students need to be equipped with ways to use it for their own skills outside in the workplace, in life, for their next generation, for their kids, for their families, actually teaching them how to use it ethically and, and how to use it properly rather than just saying, don't use it. Love to know your thoughts. I hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye.